I'd like to go over the handout on Tetrasomy 18P uh, that we provided at the conference in 2017. And we provide this information as handout because mostly it's self-explanatory. It's the kind of thing you want to take home and look at and read and is less conducive to just uh, an oral presentation. So um, for those of you who were not able to attend the conference, uh, we wanted to provide this to you. You can get a PDF from Annis. We'll send it to you and then uh, have that with you when you go through the video. And, uh, and then if you have questions, let us know. And I'll share Annis's uh, email at the end of this. Uh, and so let me go over the handout very briefly. And at the top, we have an ideogram of uh, Tetrasomy 18P. And it uh, shows what it is when you look at it under a microscope in, in a cartoon sort of way, though. Uh, you have two copies of chromosome 18 that are perfectly normal. But there's an extra chromosome. And that extra chromosome is made up of two P arms. So you have one, two, three, four P arms. So it's Tetrasomy 18P. And below that in the uh, handout is a, a diagram laid out like you're going to see many, many diagrams in pretty much every talk I give. Um, and at the top is an ideogram again of chromosome 18, this time laid on the side. Here's the P arm here, here's the Q arm here, and there will always be a red box around all or some part of the chromosome. And the red box indicates what you're looking at below. So this part below is shows the entire chromosome 18. And for the other conditions, you may uh, remember, if you've seen any of those talks, that we show everybody's study number and uh, show all the variation of all the chromosome content of each of those people. But in the case of Tetrasomy 18p, almost everybody's exactly the same. So it's quite unique among chromosome 18 conditions in that way. And so we're calling that group A here. So here's group A. So uh, And here is the legend for that. This color green, the light green, means you have two copies. The medium color green means there's three copies. This person has three copies of this region. And the dark green is four copies of chromosome 18. So group A has four copies of the P-arm, and only all of the P-arm and only the P-arm. There's only two copies of all of the Q-arm, and that's almost everybody with tetrasomy 18p. There is one person that has four copies all the way down into part of the Q-arm, and three copies of a little bit more. So that what that means is one of the, this join here is down here in the Q arm, and the two arms aren't the equal length. One is longer than the other. And the uh, third individual, or the last person in the diagram, actually has um, uh, their chromosome is duplicated beginning also in the Q arm. So they're uh, isochromosome, their extra chromosome, is larger than just the PR. Below that is uh, a diagram showing the uh, milestones, the developmental milestones of young children with Tetrasomy 18P. And so the, uh, here's the, uh, the milestone for rolling over, for example. And here are the ages in months shown across the top of this timeline. The green area is the typical age for a typical child to acquire that skill. The X is the average for the, the R participants with Tetrasomy 18P. And the ball-headed uh, lines show the whole range of the entire population who's enrolled. So you can see uh, what their milestones were when they were reached on average and what the range was for uh, all of these developmental milestones. Below that are the um, IQ scores. And in this uh, diagram, the norm, I don't want to say normal, the average range in the population is shown in green. And av the average score for the population is this uh, line that goes right here at an IQ of 100. So this is, the yellow is uh, borderline or uh, mild intellectual disability, and the red is severe to profound. And again, the X marks the average for the group, and the lines show the entire range uh, within the group.
Uh, the next uh, page is, I hope, uh, self-explanatory. This really just comes from the management guide, so everybody would have a copy of that. And those are uh, shown uh, with um, the potential conditions to look for in a neonate. So when a baby is born with Tetrasomy 18p, this is what you, the doctors might look for. When you have an initial diagnosis, these are the evaluations that need to be done and uh, referrals that need to be made. And then as they get a little older, these are the conditions on the right that you want to uh, have monitored by your physician. Also, some of the individuals with Tetrasomy 18P have eosinophilic esophagitis, and so uh, there's some symptoms to watch for for that. And also individuals with Tetrasomy 18P, we found, tend to have low bone mineral density, and so we're trying to collect more information about that and what causes that as well. Uh, these are Both these conditions are ongoing questions in our research study, so we need to have you continue to send us information, medical records, uh, anytime you have additional information about these or anything else. With regard to the, uh, whoops, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. Um, <clears throat> again, here's some information about uh, behavior. Uh, the, the first box is adults, and we have 18 adults that we have data from. Uh, below that is social impairment, and this has shows information for the adults and individuals between two and a half uh, and adulthood. And you can see the number is 28 for the uh, children and 19 for the adults, and uh, what the common problems are. As far as natural history, shown over to the right, again, this is in those over 18 years of age. I think it's self-explanatory. And that's, in that case, we have information on 24 individuals, so it's a pretty good-sized group for such a rare condition. Um, uh, below that are uh, information on uh, executive function in adults uh, with Tetrasomy 18p. And at the very bottom is preliminary data on a bleeding and clotting study that we're still working on, still trying to uh, collect more data and do more in-depth investigation um, uh, on Tetrasomy 18P and uh, the potential for um, uh, increased uh, 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 clotting. Uh, with regard to uh, bone density, these are two illustrations or two examples of the information we need if your uh, in, uh, child with Tetrasomy 18P has a bone density scan. There are two major companies that do, uh, and their reports look like this. So we need the picture showing where the measurement was made. So it can be a really crappy picture like this, but uh, we do need the picture. And here's the other picture showing where these measurements are made. And then we need uh, the actual data, the scores. We need T-scores uh, because of their age. Uh, I'm sorry, we need Z-scores because of their age. Those are corrected for age. So the, we need the actual numbers down here in these charts. So uh, in this type of machine puts out data like this, and the other bone density machine puts out data like this. So this is what we need to know. We don't need a paragraph from a doctor explaining what they thought the diagnosis was. We need this actual data. So hopefully if you show this to them, then they'll understand what it is we're collecting as far as data. So, uh, and as I said, we're still looking into that, trying to collect more information from blood tests, etc., to try to determine the nature of this, the cause of this. And uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we will keep all the participating families informed as we learn more about how, how best to treat or how best to avoid uh, low bone mineral density. This is the information we have on the current ages and the age at death of individuals with Tetrasomy 18p. So the current ages, as when this was done in the uh, summer of 2017, each blue diamond shows the current age of our study participants. You can see that for the most part they're uh, below 30 years old, so they're uh, they are a younger group. Uh, two individuals have died, and here are the ages uh, that they died. And here's what we know that may have contributed to their death. 
uh, we hope this information is useful to you to uh, try to um, uh, provide some guidance as they get older. But as you can see, this is a pretty young group of people, so we don't really know about what uh, adult onset conditions they might get, uh, what are what is a typical cause of death? We don't know if there is such a thing. Um, and so uh, we need to keep collecting that information as the population gets older and as we identify older individuals. So uh, so stick with us. Our goal is to make these uh, chromosome 18 conditions the first treatable abnorm chromosome abnormalities, and that's only going to happen with your help to stick with us, help us keep uh, collecting information as individuals get older, and keep enrolling people who are newly identified with Tetrasomy 18P. Should you have questions about this or anything else, please contact Annis Hill, who's the program manager, and here's her email address, and she will uh, either answer the question herself, uh, send you this handout if she can, if it's something she can't answer, she'll send the email off to whoever uh, in our group uh, can answer that, and she'll keep bugging them until they answer you. That's part of her job is bugging people until they answer families. But she's the go-to person that all communication should go through, and also she keeps a record of that, so it helps us know if, you know, 10 people have asked about such and such, then we know, you know, we better look into this. Um, and this is exactly how the bone mineral density study started. This is exactly how the uh, EOE stu study started. These were observations from families that told us we needed to look into this, and we did. So thank you for your support. Have a wonderful day, and stay in contact, please.